It's the dead of winter here in Northern Ontario, and though this is a tough time of year for campers, it's the best time of year for planning trips and getting your pack ready. So today I'm just going to go through my top gear recommendations. I'm not going to go through my whole pack. I think that would be super boring for me and for you. So I'm just going to go through my top seven categories. The pack, your apparel, getting water, getting fire, cooking, cleaning, and resting. I'm also not going to go into anything about my canoe or fishing setup. I have another video on that, so today is just going to be for camping. First one is super simple and so important. Get a pack that is going to keep your stuff dry. This is the Mex Log Deluxe 115 liter. I do recommend at least a 100 liter backpack. This rolls over like a dry bag, like so and you clip it down and it stays real dry, which is so nice. I will never go back to a fabric pack. Part B of this tip, get ample dry bags to go within that pack and maybe outside of it as well. My food bag is a dry bag. This is for my clothing, for books, batteries, stuff like that. This is my day pack. I've got, I probably take about a dozen dry bags of varying sizes on every trip. No matter what else is going on on your trip, staying dry is going to elevate your happiness. Tip number two is your apparel. There we go. There. When I say apparel, I mean water shoes, lightweight pants, and shirt that can cover all of your skin. Not like a t-shirt and shorts. No matter how hot it is, I am almost always wearing this. It's really not that hot, it's very lightweight stuff, and it keeps bugs, sun, and rain off of me. I don't use bug spray, and I only use sunscreen on my face. These water shoes are Keens. I got them two seasons ago, though I can't necessarily recommend them because they are falling apart. I actually sewed in some tie-down nylon strapping in there uh, to help reinforce it and help maybe get another season out of these before I toss them. But having a good water shoe, it can be a boot if you want, a shoe that you are not afraid to get wet. Don't try and keep all your shoes dry. You're doing yourself a huge disservice when you want to get out of the canoe, when you want to portage and there's a mucky section, and you're tiptoeing around it precariously trying to tilt the canoe so you can get beside a tree. It is not worth it. For the first couple seasons of my backcountry life, I didn't get my shoes wet. I always tried not to. It was so inhibiting. Just get your feet wet. Bring shoes that allow you to do so. Number three is water. I started out with a gravity filter a couple of years ago. I got this Catadyne 6 liter one and I loved it at first but the filters clog up really quickly and you can't back flush them. So I moved on to the platypus version and it is far superior. You can back flush it, which is definitely ideal just by turning the bags upside down. And the filters seem to last a lot longer before they clog up. I haven't even back flushed this once yet after at least 50 days of use and it's still running really quickly. So it's a good product. If I haven't set up camp yet and I'm on the go, then I'll just use a purification tablet. So it's good to keep some of those as well when you're on the go. My fourth gear tip pertains to fire. First one is a folding saw. I didn't have one of these for a long time. I only got this, I think, two or two seasons ago or so, maybe three. And it changed getting firewood for me. It makes it so much easier. It's also a great clearing tool on portages, just something you can keep in your pocket and pull out and cut down smaller branches. Really handy. One other thing is I don't like axes in the backcountry. They're really heavy and there is too much inherent danger. Yeah, you can learn how to chop properly uh, and you'll probably never run into an issue but as a soloist you're running too big of a risk, it's too much weight. My grandpa severed a toe once uh, with an axe. It can happen to anyone. Next is starting your fire. Uh, I don't like fire steel. I think there are way better tools for the job. I don't like matches. Definitely don't like matches. I think they're probably the worst. Zippos are needlessly heavy though so fun to play with. And there are all kinds of gimmicky toys like relatable matches. 
It's not even working right now. That's why it's not good for the backcountry. But I say forget about all those. All you need is a good old Bic. They're cheap, lightweight, ubiquitous, and one lighter lights many fires. Just keep one in a dry, warm pocket, and then I personally scatter three or four other lighters throughout my pack in different bags, usually in dry bags. Uh, so in the event of a capsize or something, um, some bag should have a dry lighter in it. Last part of the fire tip is this. A twig stove. A lot of people use these these days. Most of these things are not new or novel. They're just my experiences. This is something I like. First of all, you can use it under a tarp on a rainy day without having an out of control fire. You can still cook. Second, it reduces the need for gas cans. This one is Ohuhu brand. I got it off of Amazon. Uh, I don't care about the brand. Uh, you could probably buy any. In fact, I would probably get a different one where you can load it either at the top on the side or from the side itself. This one you have to lift up the pot and then feed your fuel into there. So that's not ideal. I'd rather be able to feed it without lifting my pot or pan. The majority of the time though, I'm not even using this. I'm just cooking on a small open fire. Bottom line, stop bringing gas cans. Save yourself some weight and you can help the environment. Fifth one is cooking. Number one tip here, get stuff that's metal with no plastic on it. This is just in a little aluminum pot. Titanium uh, spoon and fork. You'll hate paying 20 bucks for a spoon and a fork, but it's so worth it. It's so lightweight, they'll last forever and they won't burn in the fire. I do like a pot holder. This can be have some plastic on it because it just goes in the fire briefly near the fire. I like a nice wide pan because I need to toast up my naan bread on here, which is one of my favorites in the backcountry. It just receives more surface area. This one is brand new. It hasn't uh, seen a fire yet, so hopefully it's good. It does have plastic on the handle, but I might just remove the handle altogether because I know that's going to burn eventually. It's okay to have plastic for anything that's not touching the fire. I keep a plastic plate, super durable, easy to clean, lightweight, and a plastic knife. I hardly use a knife at all. I'm not cutting steaks. I don't bring steaks hardly ever. Uh, I rarely need a knife, so just this cheap plastic one is fine. One thing I absolutely hate are those double-ended sporks or spoon forks. They are useless. They don't do anything well. Sixth tip is really boring, but not to me because I'm OCD about dishwashing. Get some kind of basin for your dishwashing, but so much more importantly, get a bristle brush. Cloths, sponges, all that stuff, it gets so nasty in the backcountry, you're just spreading bacteria and food particles all over your dishes. 99% of people are horrible dishwashers. The dishes come out not much cleaner than they went in. Bugs the hell out of me. Get your biodegradable soap, but please don't dump it in water. It's amazing how many people uh, haven't been informed that that is not how it works. It doesn't biodegrade properly in water. It needs to be dumped in soil, so take it well back into your campsite and dump it there. The seventh and final category of tips is resting. First is a little inflatable pillow from Mech, this one is. Sleep is so important when you're on hard trips. Give yourself a little comfort without too much size or weight. It's very lightweight. Just by deflating or inflating it, you can get it to the softness level that you like. And more importantly, you can stop stuffing your dirty laundry into a bag and then resting your head on this lumpy pillow. It's not conducive to good sleep, so bring this little luxury. And my very last gear tip is something that i become so fond of uh, the more and more I use it. And that's just a little hammock. This one was given to me years ago from a little gift shop in Prince Edward Island. And I thought it was going to be a car camping treat. Nice little hammock to bring on in car camping trips, which I don't even do anymore. But I tried it out last season overnight for the first time, and it is the way to go. For a soloist, if you want to sleep comfortably, sleep in a hammock. And if nothing else, it's awesome for naps and for reading. Just a couple of final comments to close this out. First of all, buy stuff that lasts. All the cheap stuff, even a lot of the mid-range stuff, is going to end up in a landfill in one season. There's no point to it. 
Often you want to try something cheap because you're not sure if you want to get into camping, you're not sure if you want to try hammock camping, and you go with something cheap. Don't do that. Buy something that's good. If you buy something that's good, it has resale value. You can always resell good quality gear. The cheap stuff, probably the mid-tier stuff, people don't really want to buy that second hand. They'd rather just buy it new. Don't be afraid to try something with a good product. The final tip is not about gear you can bring, it is about not bringing gear. Doing without. Bring less on your trips and you'll be glad, generally, that you did. It takes time to figure out what you need and what you don't need, but don't always err on the side of bringing it just in case, because you're going to have a heavier pack and you're not going to be able to embrace your environment as much. Leave some of your nice food be behind and you'll come back and you'll really appreciate all the good food you have at home. Leave behind some of the gimmicky toys and gadgets and trinkets uh, and just really bring the essentials. Things like uh, camping wine glasses, you know, the plastic or the metal ones. Just drink out of your coffee cup. <laughs> I'm not trying to tell you that there's one item that's wrong to bring or one item that's right. Don't bring everything. For me, it's one of my favorite parts of the experience is, is having less. Still plenty, plenty. I'm still plenty comfortable. It's not like I'm roughing it that much. It's really nice to go without things sometimes too. Okay, that's it. Uh, I was hoping to make this a really quick video. I think it's been longer than I thought. I'm gonna wrap it up here. I'm gonna go shovel some snow off the deck before it collapses. And then I'm gonna come back inside and continue dreaming about three months from now when I start a new season. Hope you're planning some awesome trips for yourself, getting your gear ready, and I uh, hope this helps.